welcome to this broadcast of Liberty Christian Center. Let's join Pastor Kelly as he teaches us our position in the kingdom of God. Before we get started this morning, I want to kind of give you something to think about while we kind of go along with the message. We've been looking, we looked last, uh, last Sunday, and Acts tells us that we're called, they were called Christians first in Antioch, and we looked at that. Christ, I-A-N, Christian. That suffix I-A-N means to belong to, come from, be involved in, or be like. So just the simple name Christians, and I know, you know, the, the world's almost got people ashamed to say who they are. But when you, say, when you tell somebody you're a Christian, you're telling them that you belong to Christ. Amen. You came from Christ. You're involved with Christ, and you're just like Christ. Amen. So that's not something to be ashamed of. That's something to be proud of. Amen. That's something that that's something we need to understand. And as I was going back and forth this morning, You know, we've talked about my little journey. I don't know how, each, how all y'all's went, but when I got saved, people told me I was saved. I didn't know what that meant. You know, at the time, I was just thinking, I, you know, in the world and lost, I kind of knew there was a place called heaven. I thought that's what I'd heard, and that you really wanted to go there instead of hell. But I didn't know how to get there. And then when I got saved and I gave my life, I believed in my heart and confessed with my mouth, Jesus is Lord, and they said, okay, you're saved. Mm -hmm. And it took me a while after that to know I was saved. Mm -hmm. And then it took me a while to know I was justified mm -hmm. and to know that I was sanctified. And, you know, we walked, I had to walk out all these little things because what I realized is when I believed and knew I was saved, I realized I was saved the whole time. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. When I believed I was the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, I came to understand God had already done that. Right. He made me. And it, 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 as I was thinking about my walk, it's, it's been that way with everything. Once you realize and, and you know it's yours, mm -hmm. you realize he gave it to you a long time ago. Mm -hmm. It's always been yours, right? right? So us knowing and getting that knowledge and, 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 and believing in our heart, I tell you, believe, belief and faith and knowledge are the three keys to this thing. Now we can go, we can throw out rules and regulations all day long, but we couldn't do it in the Old Testament and we can't do it now. And it's not about that. It's about knowing who you are. We're going to see this because we looked in the Old, the Old Testament scriptures and said God's going to give us a new name. And that leads you back to these, this Christian scripture. Christians. God's going to give you a new name because we're new creatures. So Christ is pretty important, right? Flip to Galatians 3 real quick. We'll just go do a little recap. So we are Christians. Galatians 3 verse 29 says, If you be Christ, we belong to, we came from, we're involved in, and we, we're just like Christ. If you be Christ... Then are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. He says, if you be Christ, you're Abraham's seed, you're heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ according to the promise. I got two sermons playing in my head here. I just don't know which way we're going to go with it yet. But this last thing he says here, heirs according to the promise. And I wasn't planning on going this way, but we'll see. We know the promises of God are yes and amen, right? Mm -hmm. There are a lot of promises, and even them are all yes and amen. 
But there is the promise. Oh, we'll just head over to Hebrews. We'll jump back into where I was here in a minute. Hebrews. I was laying. I was laying there the other night thinking about all this, all the things that these people did through faith, by faith. <coughs> they believed, right? Uh, verse thirty-two. Hebrews what? Eleven thirty-two. All of faith. And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell you of Gideon, of Barak, of Samson, of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets. Who? Through faith. Now look at some of the things they did. Subdued kingdoms. Wrought righteousness. Obtained promises. Right? Mm -hmm. right. Stopped the mouth of lions. Quenched the violence of fire. Escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong. Waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. He goes on and on and he's telling you all these things these folks did by faith. Obtained the promises. Or obtained promises, right? Look at verse 39. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided something better for us that they without us should not be made perfect. They obtained promises. And they got a good report through faith, but they didn't receive the promise. <coughs> okay, I guess we're going to go this way. Let me check it. Head over toward Galatians. Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive what? The promise, the promise yeah. of the Spirit through faith. Amen. There's some other scriptures we may get into this more on Wednesday. We have received the promise. The promise of the Holy Ghost. The promise that he made to the forefathers that they all the Old Testament, they were operating in some faith and they received a good report, and they brought miracles, and they did all kinds of signs and wonders without having received the promise. The promise of the Holy Ghost, John 1. This verse takes on more power for me every time I preach. He told them to go tarry ye in Jerusalem till you receive the promise, right? I John 1. You're in John but that's Acts, right? Yes, At the end of Luke or one of them, he says, go hang out in Jerusalem until you receive the promise. Right. We just saw the Holy Ghost is the promise. What, what does that mean? Verse, John 1, 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power mm -hmm. to become the sons of God, yeah. even to them that believe on his name which were born not of blood, nor the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. You're born again. You're born of God. You're born of the Word of God, and God has given you His Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the promise. The promise. And why is that so powerful? Because that's the power to become children of God. When you got saved, you became a child of God. And that took me three or four months to understand that I had received the baptism of the Holy Spirit without evidence of speaking in tongues. That is, is a sign for me to believe what God said. He said, I got it. Well, how do you know? It's invisible. Well, because you can speak in tongues. It's an evidence for me to understand that he's given me power that I have become a child of God. Yeah. Being a child of God is the most incredible gift the most powerful, I mean, to, to, to truly understand what, what, he, what that means would take a while. Yeah. 
And he's been bringing us little bit by little bit by little bit. Think of it this way. Do you think the enemy can ever outsmart God? No. Do you think the enemy can ever overpower God? No. Do you think he could ever deceive God? No. We, we, we understand that, that, you know, I've said it before, the opposite game. We played the opposite game one time with you. And you go through all these opposites and you say, God, and they say the devil. But that's not the opposite. Because the devil is a fallen archangel. God is God. So there is no victory for the enemy over anything God does. You, through this word and through faith, are God's child. You walk in all the same wisdom and power and, and authority. Everything we, everything we are, God backs up. I don't have to back it up. God will. Mm -hmm. I am what I am because I believe what I am. If I and I were talking about the other day, every you know, we always say people are only as good as they know how to be. Right. Well, in, in the same sense, you can only believe you can only exist in what you believe. Mm. Now you know, we talked about the other day that, you know, we're always thinking God is moving us and God's exalting us and God's moving up. God's already done it. Mm -hmm. It's, we have gotten to a point in our own mind, we are at a new level. We, are, yeah. we exist at a new elevation. Yeah. And that's not, that, that goes on. You know, that... All the gifts and everything he's done for us are eternal. So I don't know how this is all going to play out, but apparently we're going to need them in the future too. But every time we believe something different, when I believed I was saved, I started sleeping a little better at night. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I cut somebody out on the freeway, you know, I must not be saved. And you hear that all the time. You know, if they didn't really mean it in their heart, well, who was man to look at them, you know, figure out what somebody else's heart is? Yeah. You can't put stipulations on how somebody got saved. All it does is confuse them and slow their walk. Yeah. You need to tell them you're saved. Yeah. Teach them that they're saved. So it don't take them a year and a half, two years like it did me. Amen. But once I realized, you know what? God said I'm saved because he said it. Mm -hmm. I slept good. <laughs> and I don't worry about it. Yeah. And it's the same thing with all of this. I am because I believe I am. And I say I am. You're going to say what you believe. That's true. Look over to 2 Corinthians. We'll get back on point here. 2 Corinthians. Chapter 4. He wraps up chapter 3. Verse 17. He says, Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Mm -hmm. A bondage. Mm -hmm. But we all, that's you, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image, from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is the Holy Spirit. That's the promise. We have received the promise, and that promise will change us into the image of the Lord. He goes on in chapter 4. But if our gospel be hid, verse 3, if, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest, that means this is for believers, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So we go from the image of the Lord, and he tells us Christ is the image of God. The enemy has no... No weapon formed against you can prosper. Right. There has not been a weapon created ever in the history of eternity that the enemy can use against you that will win. Right. Yeah. Well, that sounds a lot like God. Mm -hmm. But it's, it, it's directed at me. The only, the only weapon the enemy has is deceit and lies. Mm -hmm. Well, hold, flip, hold your finger here and flip over. Chapter 11.
chapter 2 Corinthians 11, verse 3. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. This is not a complicated message. Amen. Yeah. It's actually pretty cut and dry. Now, when we start putting ourselves in the middle of it, we complicate it. When religion lays out, a, a, you know, lays it out in in a doctrine, it gets complicated. When the law gets involved, it's complicated. But the simple gospel of Jesus Christ is: if you believe in your heart, confess with my, your mouth that you are that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. God gives you the Holy Spirit and the power to become His child, and as His child, you are victorious yes. in everything. You're blessed, you're provided for, you're protected. All of that, you know, the things that belong to salvation. Remember that verse? The things that accompany salvation. You look up saved, and it's not just ticket to heaven. It's health, prosperity, protection. It's all wrapped up in salvation. You believe you're saved. You just became the enemy's worst nightmare. Mm. Well, we read a verse the other day. We were created to destroy the works of the devil. Well, how, how can I do that if he's more powerful? He's not. How can I do that if he's smarter? He's not. You were created and given everything you need to defeat the enemy and his kingdom. That's, right. That's it. And it's not by works. It's not by earning it. It's by faith. You believe it, you can have it. So the, through this, the gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, we're changed into that same image, right? right. Verse 5, in chapter three, uh, 4, verse 5, he says, For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. Mm -hmm. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Now those three verses you can look at, basically there's stuff inside you that's a treasure. That's the blessing. We've been talking about blessing and, and provision, right? We are a, God has blessed us to be a blessing because we're family. And he will provide all our needs according to his riches in, in glory. What he's put on the inside of us, we have this treasure in earth and vessels. Look at that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Now there's a reference to King James over to Acts 9.15. You don't have to flip there. It's basically it's Paul's, Paul's Damascus Road. Encounter with God. And 9.15 says, God, it's Jesus saying, let him alone. He's a chosen vessel. He's going to go before kings, and they, he's basically Jesus laying out Paul's purpose. The excellent, the, this excellent excellency that God's put in us is a purpose, and it's his purpose, and he's going to see it fulfilled. It's not by our own hand, in our own, well, I, th I think I want to be. No, you don't think you want to be. You already are something. You need to find out what you are. You can do and you can be and you can, you can, it, you're free. But the excellency is the purpose that God put you here for and God will provide for every step of it. Then we start getting into some of the provision stuff. We are troubled on every side yet not distressed. Perplexed but not in despair. Persecuted, not forsaken, cast down and not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Because look at the life of Jesus. Signs and wonders and love and compassion and an answer to every problem he encountered. And he says, That life can be in me. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So the death worketh in us, but life in you. Look, verse 13. 
we having the same spirit of faith, yeah. same as what? The same as God. The same as Jesus. The same spirit. The same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Yeah. That is the power of being a child of God. That's right. I believe and therefore I speak. I believe mm -hmm. and therefore I speak what I believe. Right. Now it really helps to believe what God believes. Mm -hmm. Look over to Ephesians. We're going to look at a couple of verses here because this is what I want to get at. We've looked at this before. Ephesians 4. Verse 13. Till we all come in the unity of the faith. That don't mean the unity of believing. It's the unity of the faith. And of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a complete, perfect, King James says perfect, means complete man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And I've talked about this before. That tells me that we can, we can continue to become fuller of Christ. More and more and more and more. Right? John 1.16 says we've been given a measure. Let me look at it. I'm going to get the word wrong. You don't have to turn it. 116. And of his fullness have we all received. His faith we've received. Right? His fullness we have received grace and grace for grace. Romans 15. This is where it gets good. <laughs> Romans 15, verse 29, Paul says, And I am sure that when I am come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Amen. His fullness we've received. You know, I said that before. Once God, been, he, he walks us through this thing, and when we realize it's like you've always had it. We've always had the fullness of God, the fullness of Christ in us. But now we've gotten our mind to a point where I believe that. Go back to Ephesians. Go look like you don't believe me. <laughs> Ephesians 1. You know the verse, he, 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 the, the, the spirit of wisdom and revelation, knowledge in him, the eyes of your understanding, verse 17 and 18, the eyes of your understanding being light, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. You're seated with him, right? Yeah. right. We all know that. Mm -hmm. The scripture says we're seated together with him. Far above principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to who? to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Being a child of God, you walk in the fullness. As the body of Christ, the, which is the body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. We are going to see God's will accomplished in this world 
through us because we're the fullness of God. We're anointed. Picture the power, the authority, and everything that God is. And what would have happened if he would have... You, you read about it in the Old Testament. What happened to, the, to, to, to people with sin and vessels that weren't prepared and vessels that weren't... Uh, didn't have the ability and they stepped in the presence of God? It was over. Right? Because human nature, sin nature, could not contain the glory, the holiness, the righteousness of God, the power of God, it could not contain it in these vessels. So what did God do? He changed the vessel. You know, think about, you ever put gasoline in styrofoam? Have you ever seen what gasoline does to styrofoam? They don't make gas cans out of styrofoam. Right? Why not? Because it just melts. It just dissolves and it ruins it. Because the, the thing, the, the, the gasoline is too potent and too powerful for styrofoam to contain. So he put himself in his own son, Jesus. And Jesus came down here and paid a debt and set us free. And it says, if you believe in him, I'll make you a vessel that can contain me. It's kind of like the tank thing. It's almost the same thing. We, we get so wrapped up in the container, we lose, uh, we lose complete sight of the contents. If I'm out of gas, I don't care that you got a gas can. Right? I don't want the can. I want the gas. The enemy, he don't care about the container. He's, he's more worried and he trembles at the contents of the container. Mm -hmm. All the power of the Godhead inserted into one human being called Jesus Christ, anointed with the Holy Ghost and power, ruled this world. And everything seen and unseen, above and below, heaven and earth, he was he ruled and reigned over. He was in charge of because God was with him. The promise God gave in the Old Testament was, I'm going to make a way for everyone to become what he was. To become a vessel that I, myself, can put my spirit. You think the spirit of God is any less God? I don't. God has placed himself and his word and his power and his authority in you. That's a pretty big deal. He has, we'll go back and look at verse 20. Or verse 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe? The exceeding greatness of his power in you who believe according to the working of his mighty power. It's his power that made the way, and it's his power that's in you who believe which he wrought in Christ, the way he made which he wrought, was in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. That's Jesus and that's every child of God. Far above all principality and power. That's authority. That power there in King James means authority. So you are seated as a child of God, you are seated far above principality and authority and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And I'm not saying Kelly, it's Christ. I'm not trying to bump Jesus off the, off the throne. Jesus is the name above every name. Jesus is the name that every knee will bow and every tongue confess, that he is Lord. But God has, played, has made me, has put Christ in me, right? Christ in you, the hope of glory. 
and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Colossians 2, <coughs> verse 8. But where lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, 2 8. Through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him, Christ, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, which Christ is in me. Mm -hmm. And you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Right. Fullness, when you look up fullness, fullness, it don't mean just full. Now we've read words perfect means complete. And usually when it says perfect, it means complete. It either means holy without fault, flaws, or errors, or it means complete. Fullness, when you look up fullness, it means complete. I just flew right out of my brain. Full. <coughs> Overflowing full and complete. Both of them. And we have that in Christ. We have that as the body of Christ. You know, it, we, we got to get this picture. When Jesus walked this earth, when his hands reached out to the leper, that was the church. He made the decision to reach out, but he, his body's the one that did it. Right? All the things he made the decision to do, but his hands and his feet were the vehicle through which the power flowed. He wasn't just going around laying his head on people. And that's kind of this image we get that Jesus is somehow this, this immaculate son of God with power and authority and, and, and the little halo and the glow. And, the, and that's true. But you're a reflection of him. You're the body of that. We already operate in the fullness. When you, I'm saved because I believe I'm saved, right? right. Dolly and I were talking about this. Here. That is the great equalizer. How can God be equal and just to so many different people in the world? Because it's not up to God, it's up to you. We stand before God and we're like, God, why? He's going to say, that's what you believed. That's it. That's, it. Yeah. that's pretty simple judgment. Yeah. God, why didn't you? I gave you everything you needed. Why didn't you believe? Mm -hmm. If you can believe. Right. That's how it's going to be fair. We all, we all got the same opportunity. And that's why so, you know, God says, go preach this gospel. Mm -hmm. Not a gospel of rules and regulations and a bunch of stuff that, don't, that have nothing. You're making the simplicity of the gospel complicated. That's right. That's right. I know Donna's sister tried to get, she went to church after church after church to try to get baptized. I don't even know what their problem was, but she finally found one. You take, a, take this folder home, this big notebook, and read all this information and go through all these steps and do this and do that and come back and maybe we will. <coughs> She's like, I don't need all this. She went home, filled up the bathtub, said a prayer to God, and dumped herself. <laughs> That's pretty simple. When we start complicating it, putting ourselves in the middle of it, all it does is slow down the understanding. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not slamming denominations. They all have their part to play in this grand scheme. This is God's deal. If we didn't need all them denominations, they wouldn't be here. Yeah. If God didn't need them for something, they wouldn't be here. Yeah. But when we, when we put a ceiling on the understanding, we limit the, the, the possibilities. That's right. You know, I, I've known a lot of people that went to denominational churches and God will give them a revelation. Mm -hmm. I'm the righteousness of God. Right. You can go ahead and leave. <laughs> we don't need that around here. Mm. Well, that, you know, there's a ceiling on religion where you can't get, you can't get beyond it without, you got you to let it go. A relationship with God is the simplest thing. That's the simplicity of the gospel. It's not about all that. It's just a relationship. Yeah. 
you and God, you're separated. As lost and unbelieving, as lost in the world, you're you're still in sin because of Adam. And you're separated from God because God can't can't put that power and glory around you and it'll destroy you. He had to have a way to clean the vessel. You, you read in the, you don't put new wine in old wine skins, right? So Jesus came, paid the debt, whoosh, sin's out of the way. Sin's not the problem. The wages of sin is death. Jesus died. That's... He paid that debt. It's gone. What did that do? Tore the veil down so that we can, by grace, boldly to the throne of God. Amen. To have a relationship. In that relationship, God will lay out your purpose. He'll lay out your provision. He'll lay out everything you need to know to fulfill your purpose. Stop trying to fulfill your purpose through somebody else's knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just here to keep you and God going. Because the enemy, every time, every chance he gets, he's going to tell you something you did wrong and you'll find yourself wanting to step away from God. Take a look, you know, I, well, I'm not going to go see God today because I did this. It don't matter what you did. It matters what you believe. Mm -hmm. And I believe no matter what I do, I can crawl up in God's lap. That's right. And have a conversation with Him and, and talk to Him and He can teach me and guide me and lead me. That's why the Holy Spirit's here, right? Mm -hmm. You think about it that way. You, 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 you don't want to you don't want to go into the throne room today because you did something wrong. Mm -hmm. He put it in you. You can't escape it. Yeah. Where are you going to go that He's not there? He put Himself in you. That's basically saying, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Mm -hmm. You know, I was thinking the other day, I don't know this, if I can explain it. We know needs don't move God's hands, right? Yeah. But there's scriptures that say, concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. How do we move God? Now, I learned a lot when Jordan was little. And I'm still learning from her, but now Elix is kind of taking that spot where this little child, this little big kid, don't know nothing. He's just running on instinct, right? Mm -hmm. Hungry, wham. Diaper, eh. <laughs> Toy, eh. He just knows he wants stuff. Yeah. And he wants what he wants and don't care who likes it. <laughs> don't care whose it is. Yeah. <laughs> We're trying to work with him a little bit on that, but... He just knows whatever he wants should be provided to him from somebody somewhere. <laughs> the sooner the better. Yeah. <laughs> right? right? And that's the right proper way of thinking. Mm -hmm. We think that's stingy and arrogant. I mean, you know, we can train him into the, to the subtleties of it, but that's the proper frame of thinking. God, I need a lot of things yeah. To fulfill my ministry. Mm -hmm. Where are they? Yeah. And I was thinking the other day, I was sitting in my chair. I was sitting in my throne. That's part of the deal. You know, there's times when you got to see yourself as a child. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, you know, I, I, men especially, we struggle because we're supposed to provide. We're supposed to be the provider. Mm -hmm. So we struggle because we stay in father mode when we should be in child mode. Because he's my provider. I can't provide for mine until he, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, I'm sitting in my throne. Just doing my thing. And Elix come walking in the kitchen and started barking at me. Bah, 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 bah. I don't know what you want, but you come over here and spit it out. Use your words. And he starts doing his little thing. You can throw a fit if you want to, or you can come over here and use your words. He got up and he started saying, I still didn't quite get what he wanted. And he just walked over, looked at me with his face, and grabbed my little finger and started pulling. <laughs> that got me up. That got me out of my chair pretty quick. What do you want? Show me. Lead me by the hand, take me in there and point to whatever you want, and I'm going to do it. 
It's a relationship. Yeah. It's not about just barking orders at God, telling him, All right, you know, this is, he knows. Before you even ask, he knew. Yeah. It's about taking the time to stop, crawl up and look at him, and just take him by the hand. Yeah. Tell you, it's about a relationship. It's not about a bunch of dudes. It's, it's, it's not about me. Yeah. It really ain't. If it would have been, he would have had me in some kind of part of it. I'm not part of the deal. Yeah. He made a deal with himself. He made a deal with Jesus. He made a deal with Jesus Christ. They fulfilled their end. And now he says, if you can believe it, it's yours. That's right. And it's not something special because it's always been mine. I just had to get to a point where I accepted it. Mm -hmm. I just had to get to a point where I, I did truly believe all that he has is mine. Mm -hmm. The enemy is not our problem. Other than he lies to us yeah. and slows down the process, he can't stop the process. Can't, well, it was a, he can't stop the signal. Mm -hmm. He can't stop it. He knows he can't stop it. So what's he do is he gets you sidetracked. Like I was saying, he gets you so convinced that God's upset with you. Well, I'll just be upset with him back. You know, that church did me this way. Mm -hmm. Find some reason to get, get you sideways with the one person that has the answer to all your stuff. Has an answer to all your problems. Yeah. Has an answer to all your woes. Mm. And it's just a simple relationship. The simplicity of Christ is simple. Jesus came and died for paid a debt we couldn't pay. Mm -hmm. Done deal. If I believe and confess He's Lord, God gives me the power to become Him. Not just to take it to heaven. He gives me the power to become His child. Yes. And all that goes with that. That's power. That, 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 that's a good deal. That is a good deal. And that's the, that's the deal. If you can believe, all things are possible. I don't, you know, whatever, whatever lies are, you know, the enemy's sometimes it's pretty subtle. But we've got the Holy Ghost. We have received the promise. The promise. Made all the way back at the beginning. Abraham, here's, here's, here's the deal I got between me and you. You're going to be my child and I'm going to be your father. Yeah. In you, all the nations of the world will be blessed. All the Old Testament, you think about in the Old Testament, the, the greatest stories we see, we read some of them. Daniel in the lion's den, faith. But look at all the people who through faith, they did a lot of works. But certain people in the Old Testament, the Spirit came upon them. Not in, just came upon them. And God did exploits. God with us is not, that's the spirit. That's the promise. And this world was created by the power that's living inside you. All, everything in creation, seen and unseen, recognizes who you are. That's right. And yet the enemy has convinced us that we are losers. And we don't deserve it. Yeah. And that, and all the lies that we've been that we've gobbled up over these centuries. I'm telling you, there's a there's a clarity coming. There's a clarity to the simplicity of this word and the power and the authority that's, that goes with being a child of God. Nothing is impossible. There ain't a demon in hell that can stand against you. There ain't a, there, there, there's not a situation or a circumstance we can't already, we haven't already overcome. The manifestation 
of the, the, the sons of God. You know, all these things that in my mind the enemy has, it's a future thing, it's a future thing in the ages to come. Now are we the sons of God. Now is salvation come. If I look back at all the things that I've one by one, me and God have walked through until I finally believed it, and then I realized for each and every one of them, I've always had it, that everything I am believing to be, I already am. That pattern's going to hold true, I know it is, because He's already done it. So, The, 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 the million dollar businesses it's already yours the divine health we walk in it's already ours the provision that God's going to provide exceedingly abundantly above what we could ask or think it's already there it's already been done because of who we are and the power that lives in us you know it's like I'm trying to close, but I, I, I maybe I'm trying to get myself to understand it, but God came, left heaven, did what he did through Jesus Christ and opened a door for us so that he could step off the throne and inhabit us. And yet he forgot to provide for himself. He forgot to to this is, it's his, it's his doing. It's his purpose, it's his plan, it's his will. He stepped off, put his spirit in us, and forgot to make a way to succeed. That confuses me. Because when he came down and inhabited the first person in Jesus Christ, the entire world knew. And provision was being made years before he even got here. He had no lack, no want for anything he needed to fulfill his mission because it was God in him doing the mission. I'm starting to see this thing. Now, I said last week, there's no, there's no other person on this planet that can stop you from doing what you're called to do. Fulfilling your purpose. The, the, the only one I have to worry about is this one. This, this old way of thinking. And if I can get past that and just operate in the mind of Christ who didn't think it was robbery to see himself equal with God. Not God. God's child. This broadcast has been made possible with support from faithful partners of Liberty Christian Center and viewers like you. If you would like to become a partner or give a one-time donation, please check the description box for more information. Be sure to follow and subscribe so that you never miss an upload. Thank you for watching.